The next thing we want to take a look at is Lagrange's theorem. This is a simple little theorem that is amazingly important. Anytime we can kind of limit the possibilities of something, it ends up being huge. And in this particular case, it's something that we've really been seeing all along throughout this course. If we have a finite group and a subgroup of it, then the number of elements in that subgroup, the order of that subgroup, divides the order of the group. And then further, we can even be get a count of how many cosets there are for that subgroup. So let's start. Let's say uh, that we can list what are all the different cosets of H in G. And in fact, let's even go ahead and let's say these are actually distinct. There are two things that we want to prove here. We want to prove that every element of G is in one of those cosets. And the other thing we want to show is that those cosets are disjoint. But both of these follow pretty much directly from the properties that we had before. So let's say A is an element of G then certainly A is in AH. But these were the distinct cosets in there, so that must be that AH is equal to some AIH. And there we go. So A must be in one of these cosets. Further, the cosets being disjoint that's what we just proved in those things. We showed that either two cosets were exactly the same coset or that they were completely disjoint. There was, they had no elements in common. Since we take these things to be distinct cosets, that must mean that these things are all disjoint, that no elements are shared between these cosets. Those two things together prove the theorem because if every element of G is in some coset, that must mean that G is equal to the union of all these things. Further, since we've got a union of a bunch of things and those things are disjoint, that means that the number of elements in G is equal to the number of elements in A1H plus the number of elements in A2H plus the number of elements in AKH. But another one of those properties that I didn't go over into very carefully in the video is that every one of these things has to have the same number of elements. So I can say this is equal to k times the order of h. And there we go. So the number of elements in g is a multiple of the number of elements of h, or the number of elements of h divides the number of elements of g. But we can even take this one step further. If I just divide by the order of h, the order of g over the order of H, 
has to equal k, but k was the number of cosets. So there we are. This idea of the number of cosets is an important thing that for many different things as we go on. So we're going to come up with a little bit of a notation there. We're just going to say that the index of h and g is the number of distinct cosets. And we're going to call that the magnitude of g colon h. Again, it's just the index of h and g is what we call that. Well, then we can kind of rephrase that last statement up here. The number of distinct left cosets of h and g, well, that's what we just called this g colon h thing. And we said that was equal to the order of g over the order of h. So the index of g and h is the order of g over the order of h. Let's look at, a, look at a very brief example, kind of, of all this stuff here. Let's say we had G is a group with 30 elements. We don't know anything more than that. G is a group with 30 elements. The order of G is equal to 30. It could be cyclic, it could be non-cyclic, it could be abelian, it could be non-abelian. Don't know any of that. All we know is it has 30 elements. Well, that means the only possibilities for the order of a subgroup H are things that divide into 30. It could be 1. It could be 2, it could be 3. It couldn't be 4 because 4 doesn't divide into 30. It could be 5, it could be 6, it could be 10, it could be 15, and it could be 30. No other numbers could we have in a subgroup of that order. Further, if we pick one of those, now, I guess it's worth noting that these are the only possibilities. It doesn't say that there is a subgroup of that order. If I have a group with 30 elements, there's nothing that guarantees I've got a subgroup with 10 elements. It's just that there might be. Let's suppose we do. So let's suppose the order of H, the order of some subgroup H, is 10. So now we can further say that the index of h in g has to be the order of g over the order of h is 30 over 10 equals 3. In other words, h has three distinct cosets.